It was a warm fall afternoon at Grandfather Rolling Thunder's house in Carlin, Nevada. As I recall, he and I were sitting in the family room having a, one of our deep conversations. And of course, listening to the occasional train roll by on the nearby track. You know, Grandpa used to work for the railroad. He re retired from the railroad, so he was pretty fond of those trains coming by. Now, on this particular day, our conversation was centered around what R.T. described as the history of predatory Christianity in North America. And R.T. was commenting on how many people had often confused his rejection of Euro-American Christianity with rejection of Jesus when in fact such was not the case. Our train of thought and discussion was sidetracked when a knock came at the doorway and a lowered head stuck through the curtain there and they said that the car had pulled up outside of the front gate and Auntie Begay was there I guess and asking for our tea. So, while the helper uh, assisted uh, grand grandfather into his wheelchair, I was asked to go out and greet the newcomers and offer the proper hospitality. When I arrived at the car, I was met by a Navajo man, Frank, and his mother, Auntie uh, Begay, who remained seated in the passenger side of the car. Frank explained to me that his mother was suffering from uh, diabetes, which I could see from her uh, challenges there, and she was now unable to walk. They had gone to the uh, Indian Health Clinic down there on the res, and, but the doctors had said that they couldn't help her, and so they had got in their car and come up from the res and, uh, to seek some help. So Frank and I made the uh, four-handed fireman's chair, you know, and we uh, carried Auntie Begay from the car on up into, uh, by the house there were the picnic tables. It was kind of a, a horseshoe-shaped area and a picnic table in the middle of it. And R.T. was sitting there in his wheelchair waiting on us, so we, we sit. Auntie Begay down there on the bench, and uh, R.T. spoke to Auntie Begay, and she shared about how that uh, she was no longer, because of her affliction, no longer able to cook for her family and uh, do her other chores and watch after her, her grandkids. And uh, she said that she had had no luck with the doctors, and so. This really uh, saddened her because uh, it was creating a burden on her family. And uh, so, uh, Auntie Begay and her family had been friends with, uh, with us for, for many years. And, and some of her cousins had uh, come up previously uh, to get help with their afflictions. And so, uh, Grandpa R.T. wanted to help her out, but unfortunately, he had been struggling himself with his own health problems lately, and uh, so he leaned over to me and said, uh, I'm going to need your help with this one, so why don't you go ahead and get your stuff ready, and uh, by the way, go, uh, bring your pipe too. And so, uh, you know, this was a while back, and I was still on training, and and so well, kind of still on training. But uh, uh, you know, in our Indian religious tradition, when when a medicine elder asks you to do something, you don't say no. <laughs> so I went and got my stuff, 
and uh, started making ready to do a carrot ceremony. Well, of course, you know, it didn't take long for people that were there, because there's always a lot of visitors around at, at the time, and back in those days. And, uh, so word spread pretty quick, and before long there was a crowd gathered around, and they were very quiet and respectful, and they just kind of watched as I was making ready with my can of coals and had the fire going. And, and Grandpa, you know, he uh, he sent for his uh, his his medicine fan, and, you know, and so uh, eventually the time was right. And so, uh, you know, R.T. said, okay, let's, let's go ahead and do this. And so I uh, got my medicines together. He picked up his medicine fan. I got my, my stuff together, and I set it over in front of Auntie Begay. And then, you know, R.T. moved over as close as he could get. And we got started. And uh, so, uh, you know, he started doing a little bit of his thing. And I did my thing. And, when we got done, uh, we were sitting there around the picnic table, and, and R.T. looked at me and said, "Well, let's go ahead and let's do some praying." So uh, he loved to he loved to smoke my pipe. He thought it was way cool. So got it out, did the songs, did the prayers, and loaded the pipe, and passed it around. So everybody had the opportunity to offer up the smoke in gratitude for a Creator hearing our prayers and answering them in a good way, you know, so that uh, all the people would benefit. And, well, after we got done with that ceremony, then, uh, you know, people got to chattering and talking, and, you know, after just a little while, R.T., he was sitting there in his chair, and he leaned over to Auntie McGay and he said, you know, I'm kind of getting hungry. And the conversation just died. Everybody's eyes were on Angie McGee. And she never said a word. She just stood right up, walked on into the house, into the kitchen, cooked us a piece of bread. Boy, I'll tell you, that got people worried. Man, they were just, everybody was chattering after that. They were all excited about what they had just seen and experienced. So uh, we had a good eat. And then uh, the afternoon was waning, so Frank and Auntie Pagay got back in the car and we all said our goodbyes. And they headed on south back down to the res. And, well, R.T. and I, we just went back in the family room and resumed our conversation.